Hello and welcome back. Thanks for joining. My name is Berit and today you will probably witness the most spontaneous video that I will ever do because I'm not a spontaneous person. But I found out today about this thing called Booktube Spin which is hosted by Rick McDonald and it is something that kind of randomizes your TBR which I think is pretty fun. So what you do is that you make up a list of 20 books um, you can divide them into categories if you want or you, you don't have to um, and then tomorrow um, Rick will pick a number randomly from 1 to 20 and that is a book that you should read in the next I think it's three months now until the end of September and I thought it might be fun and it's kind of realistic for me to actually get to that to read at least one of these books until September because I'm usually not a readathon kind of person where people read five books in four days. No, I cannot do that. Um, I also went ahead and made four categories out of books that I have lying around here and um, yeah, I'll just walk you through them and um, just uh, FYI uh, for a lot of those books I am not sure that I remember what they are about so sorry for that usually I know that a bit better but some of these books have been sitting on my shelf for quite some time so we are starting with category number one what a surprise and those are books that I own in Norwegian they were not necessarily written in Norwegian originally but those are books that I own in Norwegian and the first one on this list, I think, is also the last book that I purchased, pretty much. And it is Flyktningene by Viet Tan Nguyen. In English, this is called The Refugees. It is a collection of stories about Vietnamese refugees in the USA. And I have heard good things about the book. I'm excited to read it, so I, I kind of want to read it anyway, so... Maybe this will be uh, one of the next ones. Number two is Mesopotamia by, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Serhi Zyadan, maybe, probably, I don't know. This is a Ukrainian novel, originally. Um, I don't really remember what it's about. It's been a while since I bought it, also in a kind of sale. Um, I think it's about a large city in Ukraine and about the people living there, if I remember correctly. I have been wanting to read this, but I'm also kind of afraid because it's kind of long and kind of in Norwegian. So maybe I will tackle this fear very soon. But yeah, I'm excited to read this one and I think it will be very interesting. I've never read something from Ukraine or something that takes place there, I think. Number three is at Hummerliv, uh, which would translate to A Lobster's Life, I guess, by Erik Fosnes Hansen. This is originally in Norwegian. I found this literally like on the street uh, in a city nearby where someone had just piled up some books to give away. And I thought the cover was nice. I thought the title was interesting. I think it's something kind of political. Yeah, that's all I remember. Uh, number four is Tante Ulrike Zwei by Seshan Shaka. This is also originally in Norwegian. This was a big success here when it was first published a few years ago, not too long ago. Um, this is about um, immigrants in Oslo. That's about everything that I know and about the conflicts that they have in Oslo. And I'm excited to read it, but um, again, afraid I won't understand enough but I really want to read it um, so yeah it's on the list number five and the last one in the category uh, Norwegian is Almen Theory on Glemsel um, I think what was the English title a general theory about forgetting something like that by José Eduardo Agualusa this was originally written in Portuguese and it takes place in Angola during the time when Angola um, fought for its independence. So I think 
this might be a very interesting read. I have also never read something that takes place in Angola, so excited for this one as well. Moving on to the next category, which is books that I have purchased second hand. The first book in this category is The Woman on the Stairs by Bernhard Schlink, originally in German. Again, I, I kind of remember, kind of forgot what it's about. Um, I think it's about a painting that reappeared after a long time um, and there are three or four men who were in love with the woman who is on the painting and they kind of investigate what has happened. So I'm guessing this book has art, romance and maybe some crime or some mystery, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. I'm excited for this one. I think this could be good. I read, I read The Reader by Bernhard Schlink in school. I hated it. Hated it, really. But that was, I think, because I was too young when I read it. It was not because of the writing. It was because of the story, because I didn't get it, really. So we're going to give this uh, author another try. Number two in this category is Things Fall Apart by Chinua Akebe. Uh, I found this in a used bookstore and I bought it because uh, whenever I read work-related theories, they bring up this book, which is kind of a retelling or a, another perspective on Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I read Heart of Darkness in university, so I guess it will be very interesting to read this and then kind of see the differences and, yeah, conflicts, I guess, that this book uh, addresses, I hope. The next book on the list, uh, we are now at number eight, is the only one that I'm kind of nervous about reading because I kind of think I won't like it. I'm not sure why, and that's American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Also found this in a used bookstore. I had heard about the book before. I have heard good things about Neil Gaiman. I have never read something by Neil Gaiman myself, so I don't really know why I think I'm not gonna like it, but maybe we'll find out soon. The next one, number nine, is Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. I don't think I have to say much about this because it's pretty known. Also find it, found this in a used bookstore. Um, yeah, I'm excited to read this one. And the last book in this category of secondhand purchases is Mario Puzo Omerta, um, which I basically bought because I have read The Godfather and I love The Godfather, so I thought more mafia crime, why not? Category number three is books by Asian authors and the first book here, the book with the number 11, is The Three-Body Problem by Xi Xin Liu, if that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I mispronounced that and probably all of the other names in this category. Um, this is a science fiction novel. I don't know much about it. I basically just know it's science fiction and I kind of want to read science fiction, so I borrowed this from the library. The next one here is Chinese Cinderella by Adeline Yen Ma, um, which has the subtitle The Secret Story of an Unwanted Daughter, and I guess that's also all I know about it. Um, I think this might be very interesting. This could be uh, not the most fun read on the list, but um, yeah, it's also been sitting on my shelf for quite some time, so looking forward to this one. The next one is a classic, which I also have been wanting to read already, and it is Nuli Me Tangere, or Tangere, I don't know, by José Rizal. This is a Filipino classic, um, which I have been wanting to read, but I kind of haven't started, so... It's on the list. I don't really remember what it's about again. Sorry. Worst researched video ever. So the next one is The Romance of the Three Kingdoms by Luo Guanzong. Sorry if I mispronounced that horribly as well. This is one of the big four Chinese classic novels and um, 
I've been afraid to start it because it's big and because I'm afraid that I won't understand it, etc. And that's why I put it on the list because maybe that will motivate me to read it very soon. And the last one in this category is A Hero Born by Jean Yong, which technically, as you can see, I have started to read. I'm on page, wow, seven. So I, I don't count it as having started it because I started it a few weeks ago and then I, I didn't continue reading. This is a Chinese fantasy novel, which um, I'm looking forward to reading very much because um, I like martial arts and I have never read a Chinese fantasy and I'm really in the mood for some wuxia right now. So, okay. We have the last category, which is books that I have borrowed, borrowed from the library or borrowed from people that I know. And the first one here is also an Asian book and it is Human Acts by Han Kang, which I have borrowed from my local library in the Norwegian version. I very recently read The Vegetarian and I liked it very much, although it was also very weird and therefore I want to read uh, human acts. The next one is ugh, Watchmen by Alan Moore, one of the very classic comic books. This is already the second time that I borrowed this from my library, so I kind of hope I'm reading this this time before I have to bring it back. So that's also why I put it here, to make myself aware of the fact that this is sitting on my shelf at the moment. The third book is Homegoing by Yagi Yasi. I have heard good things about it, although again I don't 100% remember what this is about, but it's a novel that is also, that takes up um, a lot of issues of American history, mostly I guess, slavery. So I think this might be very interesting. And yeah, I found it in the library, borrowed it and thought it might be interesting to read it. Okay, number 19. Um, this is a book that I borrowed from someone I know, which is a Norwegian book called Nai o Atanai, um, No and Again No, I guess, by Nina Lücke. This is a satirical novel about regretting motherhood, I think. So I'm not sure how much I'm looking forward to reading this. I borrowed it because I was talking about um, being afraid of reading Norwegian books and then the person who I borrowed it from was like, well, you could read this one. It's not very, it's not very intimidating. So I guess that was kind of the motivation to get me to reading Norwegian books. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure if I'm, if I would be looking forward to reading this because I'm not sure I'm in a regretting motherhood kind of mood at the moment, but yeah. And the last one, number 20, V uh, by Yevgeny Samyatin. I guess that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. Uh, it's in English. It would be called us. This is a Russian dystopian novel from the 1920s, I think, maybe from 1919, not sure. One of the first like dystopian novels, if not the first dystopian novel. I borrowed this from a colleague and I'm very much looking forward to it because um, I kind of want to read dystopias. So, um, and I also haven't read much Russian literature, so this might be very interesting. Yeah, and that is the last book on the list. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Maybe you found some of the books interesting and uh, I guess in one of my next wrap-up videos or book talks I will talk about one of the 20 books that I've mentioned. Now I'm excited to see what fate will choose for me tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe I'll see you in the next one. Bye!